I'm going to tie another intruder on a tube here. Sorry. So I'm going to take a white uh, tie in thread here. Started off the front this uh, pink candy intruder. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue onto my thread there. This time around, we're going to put the, the eyes on first. So, take a pair of large dumbbells here. Set them on the top, one turn, and then that allows you to take them underneath. And then I want to get a blob of super glue going here. Top and bottom. And then I'm going to figure of eight into that there. Turns the front a few turns behind and that'll set those eyes in position. Little run of glue. So take our tie and thread down to the back here. And again, a little run of glue. And I'm going to take a bunch of silver light bright and twist that on to create a dubbing rope, and from that, a dubbing ball. And this ball then will flare our materials. So I'm going to use a little bit of Icelandic runner here, for sure. I'm going to take a bunch of that, set it on the shank, put on a couple of loose wraps, and then as you can see it's not 100% even around it, so I'm just going to use my thumb while this is still on loose, just to splay it around and when I'm happy with it then I'll wrap it up to the back of my dubbing ball as you can see it started to, to flare out and I'll take some more glue Next I'm going to take a strand of uh, pearl crystal here, I'm going to double that over and set that on up on the top here. Then I'm going to fold it across a little bit and then back on itself and wrap over so we're going to end up with four strands now in the tail and trim that off. Those are slightly longer than this portion of the, uh, of the Icelandic hair. Next you want to add in some sort of a pinky hackle thing, so something like uh, Rhea if you can get it and if you can't find Rhea then something like ostrich or mini ostrich, I'm going to use mini ostrich here. I'm going to pull off a bunch of it and like the uh, horsehair before it I'm tying it in as a sort of a fake hackle, so I'm stripping off bunches. setting them on and allowing to splay around. And the reason I'm doing that rather than winding it as I did on a previous one is that the hackle on this one is a bit too stiff and therefore not suitable to be wound. And that will give you sort of like a marabou like movement. And the horsehair underneath will give it a bit of support. Now I'm going to take uh, some Amherst tied blue, dyed blue, sorry. I'm going to put that on longer again than our uh, other portions of the hackle there. 
you see I've allowed that display out on my side so I'm going to take another bunch then and go to the far side and do the same with it, set it up for length as you can see I'm tying this in well forward of the actual intended finish tying point and that then allows me to splay it around and wind back as I reposition those fibres so as you can see it's now sort of all around so then I can hold it back and wind up to it That is our rear portion done. So the body we're going to do in a per I'm sorry, this is a, a silver flat braid. And I'm actually going to separate out maybe an inch or so of that at the rear. Just unravel it basically. And that's to give me a sort of like a fake holographic hackle. So I'm going to set that on top and then I'm going to splay it around. Tie it in position, fold this back and then tie up to the rear and run my thread back to the front of the fly. Now to make the uh, braid a bit more secure as I'm not going to rib it. I'm going to put a bit of super glue. Just a little bit of a run of it on the body. And then as I wrap my braid onto that it will hold in position. Tie it off at the front. Now, at the front we're going to repeat the sort of back stages, not all of them, we're not going to put the rear part into it with this one, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in in reverse, so I'm going to tie in a little bit of my blue Amherst here, top and bottom. The fact that the eyes are on to start off with here slightly gets in the way of doing this, so it's a little bit more fiddly. See, I have like a reverse um, a reversed hackle. And I'm going to do the same with my pink runner or Arctic Fox or whatever it is that you happen to be using. So, trim the ends of that. Set that on top and allow it to display around. Tie it down. Flip the fly over. Repeat that process on bottom, just splay it out. super glue my thread wrap over those and wrap back just to where the cut ends ended and I'm going to create another dub and ball with our uh, silver light braid That'll cover up those tie-in points. Then we can fold these hollow tied portions that we created here. Fold those all back, hold them in position with your hand. 
start wrapping in front. And then what I want to do is quickly up maybe five centimeters or so of my tie-in thread there and wrap that up tight to the back of it now that a little bit of that will just leach into it. the tie-in of those. You might have to repeat the process, depends on how it pans out for you. Okay. So I don't want them tied down flat, but I just want them to sort of be sticking back. Now, we take a strand here of Mirage crinkle, double it over and lay it on the top, fold it back on itself, trim that off, still have a bit left so I can put in that so we end up going we'll end up here with six strands as sort of like a underwing of Mirage crystal. And now I'm going to put on a pink schlappen type feather. Double that over. It's easier to control that way. Tie it in by its tip and fold it back. And the schlappen then will control to a certain extent what we've wrapped on before it. So I'm just going to pull all that out of the way, stroke it back as I go. And this will allow us to get up in behind the eyes there. And tie it off. Nearly done. I'm going to put on one of these blue dyed sort of church window feathers here from a cock pheasant just as a wing plate. Fold it back on itself. And I'm going to finish the head on this one with some light bright. So do is to spin up like a long thin rope here of light bright and then I'm going to super glue the white thread portion of my head above and below spin up this dub and rope and then we're going to figure of eight that. And actually finish it off on one of the eyes there. our intruder tube finished. As you can see it gives you quite a bit of volume for not a huge density of, of material. 